G'day, we're the Inforrunners, and today I have with me... Hi, Al Garrod. And I'm Execute, and today we're going to be doing our, what do you call it, the Vultures Buyer's Guide. Uh, anything you want to add there, Algrid? Well, yeah, um, like in our last in our last um, Buyer's Guide, we looked at the, eight, the Hercules, and we were pretty heavy on that. We, we thought the prices were a bit high, we didn't like the way they did certain things, certainly for the A2. This one, I was actually quite quite happy with this one i like the i like the price point it's still a bit high but i like just something about the ship just caught me and i, and I do like it yeah, it's reasonable uh, compared to uh, the a2 bomber it's certainly example. nice certainly nice after the herculean blunder yeah. um, so i guess we're going to go through the ship and give you some pros and cons uh the way we've kind of taken a look at this ship is we've actually kind of compared it to the other utility based advanced starters so they would be the Prospector, Prospector and the Vulcan and mm. main, mainly we're going to be comparing it today to the Prospector due to the fact that the Vulcan is a little bit of a jack of all trades and kind of master of none um, so it, it tries to do too many things and probably yeah and, and it does have that crossover as well and, and so it, but the, the Prospector really is very similar in terms of what it does and how it does it uh, for, for its role and hopefully we'll, we'll bring that out yeah, so I guess we'll start it off then with a, a big pro. Um, much like the Prospector, um, it has a really core primary function. Uh, but unlike the Prospector, the Prospector really only has, it's kind of a one-trick pony, it just does mining. This kind of does the mining of uh, ships as it were by stripping them of their materials. Uh, but its secondary function is that it obviously can pick up the components as well of those ships. Um, yeah, and, and, and that kind of gives it that customizable cargo hole in this thing really enables it to do that you know you can actually yep. put your components in go up go either out get a component put it in the back of your ship you're laughing and kind of um, comparing that against the prospector as an example it doesn't have customizable cargo uh, carbo cargo it's locked into just pure ore and uh and, and that's a real like you look at the you look at the prospector it's got that beautiful 128 scu of cargo in satchels Yep. But it can only carry four satchels at a time, and that, that reduces it down to, what, 40-odd? Yes. Uh, yeah, it depends when it when it gets shrunk down. We don't know what that number's going to be, but it'll probably work out to be similar to the 12 SCU of cargo that the Vulture yep. has. Yeah, so um, when, it's, when it's refined. But that means if I'm operating it by myself, I am only I can't use that 128 SCU. I've got to either... You only get a third of that. And then take it off the refinery. And then when it's refined, I can't take that stuff elsewhere. I'm just selling my ore to, my ore to the refinery and going back. Hmm. Uh, I, I think the, the what you're kind of trying to say there is the, the Vulcan heavily relies on a cargo ship, no matter which yeah, way yeah. you look at it. Um, it's going to require a cargo ship at some point. Because even, even if you just have those four initial saddlebags and you take them to a refining plant, how do you get it from the refining plant to its next destination? You, you need a cargo you ship. You, um, you, you're only selling your ore to the to refinery. You're not yeah. selling it to the... And, and the, not being sold on from you, you're, yeah. you're just... To bring it back to the Vulture, the obvious uh, standpoint there is this can kind of manufacture it a little bit itself and then it can take it itself because it has that customizable cargo. It can take it to its final destination. It's more of a complete ship. It doesn't yeah. rely heavily on a cargo ship. And it could even pick up, you know, and take, take stuff from there to the next destination. So it can actually do that round trip, which is... And that was one of the things I did say in the RTV about, about this, it, it, that cargo does give it that versatility yeah and, um, and in in opposed to the prospector that may have more but it's not customizable so in mm. a weird way they kind of balance out in a, in a strange roundabout side of what sort of ways um yeah. i think another pro for the ship is it's a solo ship it's it's the type of ship that if you're really into salvaging and you don't have the mates to fill out your reclaimer if you've got a reclaimer uh, then you can just go out on your own and do a little bit of a uh, little bit of salvaging just to keep yourself occupied while your friends are doing other stuff yeah, well, it's even the type of ship that if you come home, you know, you're, you're working, you come home from work, you've got a couple of hours before you've got to feed the kids or whatever, you can go out there and do do your mission, do your job, do a bit of salvage, go home and be happy. Um, so it, it's got that nice feel about it. You can't, you while we've said in the past, the big ships, you'll be able to use AI crew on them and probably get by and make them function well. This ship, you don't even have to worry about AI. Mm. Just bang, bang, and that's that's an advantage you'll get with all mm. all three of those 
Probably, should... probably the obvious counter to that is you are actually, you are by yourself and you've got to do everything yourself. You can't be a lazy, lazy mofo and rely on someone else to do it for you. You but, have to do it all. And, and this is where this, this is where a comparison with the Vulcan comes in. Like the Vulcan, it's got the many jobs that it does. It can do the fuel, it can do the repair, it can do the changing ammo. And, and operating those drones is, is going to take time. Whereas this ship, one trick pony effectively its main role is that scraping of a hole and that's something you can do by yourself you don't need mm. you don't you know yeah you're by yourself you're doing it by yourself but you don't need anyone else to do that with you it's mm. I, I i i kind of think like a lot of people go oh do i really need the salvage ship because i can i could just get a freelancer and do it myself but the real thing is you can kind of like the mining of an asteroid where you go in with a prospector and you just cherry pick out the ore that yep. you want You've got to think of like those panels or walls or the hull as uh, like an asteroid, and you've got to mine through just to get the really good ast the pieces that you want. Because with the the freelancer, unless you're going to or, or, or a cargo ship and salvaging, you're going to have to go through and mine out everything mm. by hand to get to the core little components, and that's going to take such a long time. So, and even if you use the breaching charges to you know to separate the sections, you'll never get as much money for them. That's right. You take that section, you put that whole section or that wing section or tail section of a Hornet into your into your freelancer, and you take it back to the shop because you can't or the refinery. They're going to say, "Yeah, that's uh, not processed." They're going to give you this much. The funny, the thing. funny thing is, you'll probably end up taking it to a vulture or a reclaimer anyway to get it done. Do you know what I mean? Because they'll be yep. closer and more readily available. Well, if you've got mates who've got a reclaimer, you'd take it to the guys with the reclaimer. I, yeah. I can't say you'd really take it to a vulture. Like That'd be your last... Well, vulture can still do it, is what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, but... But yeah, reclaimer's probably faster. Excuse me. So, um, I guess the obvious one for this is also it's the cheapest of these three ships. Mm. Uh, with the Prospector at 150 US and the uh, Vulcan at 200 and this is at uh, 140 so it's slightly cheaper and slightly i think the pro cheaper. i think the prospector originally was 140 but it's now gone up so i actually say they're probably they're probably they're probably on par and and that would well, make sense because the prospect has been released i'm assuming that once this is released it'll be the same price so i'm going to yeah. kind of say it and the prospector are on the same price level mm. and that makes sense given that they're both working on that ability to cherry pick and be really focused on the one goal yep. but this has a bonus over the prospector and i think it really comes into the fact that the prospect that you're just mining ore. You mine your ore, you build up your ore, you've got to, if you wanted to get the metal or the alloy, you've got to go take take the refinery, get it refined, then you know, get the get the ores, take them elsewhere, take them. Whereas the pros whereas this thing it goes in, it takes off the element as it scrapes the hull, mm. takes it to the refinery and sells the element. And, and uh, uh, the question I kind of come back to, and I've read this through my head the last few couple of days in regards to this ship, while they're mining rocks, so to speak, will be readily available across planets and in space and stuff like that, how readily available are uh, wrecks going to be? Mm. But, but the thing is, once you find one wreck, that's probably all you're going to need to kind of fill this ship, whereas opposed to the, the prospector, you're going to have to move through multiple rocks. You're going to be, uh, it's more of a searching nature ship. You're going to have to search, mine a bit, search, mine mm. a bit, unless you find a really big node, obviously. Uh, but I think they'll probably be more rare, like in real life, where with this ship, if you stumble along, let's say, a constellation, you could just pull out all the really cool top level ore and maybe have to make a second or third trip to the same location. Yep. Uh, so I think it's not as much as exploratory as the prospector would be. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. I think the, the other obvious thing that we kind of mentioned earlier is it's kind of one step up the refining chain over the prospector where the prospector is going to have to deliver it to a manufacturing plant. This can at least package it itself and then sell it straight away uh, at, at the second level price point rather than just raw ore or raw materials. Yeah. It can package it for selling it, but also it can then it can transport itself to a manufacturing plant and then take it from the manufacturing plant manufacturing plant and sell it as the final hardcore refined product where obviously the prospector, the prospector can't on the other hand just it can only refine you know mine the ore and then it's got to take it to a refinery and mm -hmm. once it's refined due to the nature of the saddlebags and its lack of a cargo hold it can't take it anywhere else you just sell the you're just selling your ore to the refinery to be processed and that's it now um, now when we were discussing this with hayes um one of the things that came up was the vulcan and um 
one of the more interesting things we were talking about was the extraction of fuel. Um, and I think when you pair this ship with a Vulcan, I think it's a lot stronger. Don't you kind of think so? Oh, definitely. I was at, well, when we were talking a bit up later earlier as well, um, I actually think if you pair this with a Vulcan, the fact that the Vulcan can repair, remove the fuel, uh, take the drones out, or take the, um, the ammo out of the weapons, remove the components, uh, get the fuel and all that stuff. Mm. Um, it actually makes the Vulcan really strong when paired with this ship that can actually strike the hull. And so they actually... You mean, you mean it makes the Vulture? I get what you mean, though. I get what you mean. But you said it the makes both of these ships yeah. really strong when work together. And yeah. I think if you scale up, I actually think those two ships working together, like if you and I, you know, we go mm. out, you've got the Vulcan, I've got the, the, the Vulture. If we, if we could take those two ships out, I actually think those two ships may work better at than a single medium ship that we're both on operating, trying to do the same yeah. thing. It kind of, it's really going to come back to cost factor and the actual ship you're trying to break up. Yeah, I tend to agree. And it kind of allows the Vault, if they were working together, it kind of allows the Vulcan to kind of focus more on its primary function. So, for example, you can hand off those components you've found to the Vulture to carry in its cargo if it needs to. That's um, right. You can feed it some fuel. You can get some ammo. So you, you kind of help each other. It's a win-win type of scenario with that ship. Yeah, you're, you're not actually um, crossing over on each other's feet when you're doing that yeah. yet. You do your job, he's doing his yeah. job. It's really just nice synergy. Right? Yeah, so, so, so kind of to carry on from that point, like, like because if the Vul Vulcan wasn't there to help you take out the fuel, you'd have to take that fuel out by yourself, by hand, or you'd have to cut around that section with breach charges and leave it behind. Um, it's going to come down to a time thing, obviously, because if you're trying to empty, say, a really big ship's fuel thing, it's just going to take too long, so you'll leave it. Um, you know, the other real downside to this ship, I guess, is you've kind of got to get out and do stuff in EVA. There are, you are going to have to plant breach charges. You are going to have mm. to cut out the components by hand. So it, it really is, like they call it on the website, light salvage. It really is light. It, uh, yeah. Not having that ability to cut up the ship uh, is a big thing. Um, yep. Yeah. Um the other thing with this ship, which is a, which is probably one of the negatives we were looking at, and mm. looking at it, is because it's it's is small and because it is light, where and you know, we did say that one of the advantages it can do these two roles, it can do the scraping of a hull and taking components. But the small cargo size in this ship means you've actually got to choose: do I want to take the components? Do I want to scrape a hull? Hull? How much time do I have? All of those things will come in, and you can't just say, oh, "I'll take it all," because I can. Mm. You really got that choice matters it kind of puts it in between the prospector and the vulcan in that regard where the prospector doesn't have any of that cargo it's got no choice whatsoever the vulcan has that flexibility but it's limited to 12 scu like this ship but it mm. can only do one of those three roles that's kind of been assigned at a time it has to go back and swap it's a bit like this where it's like well you can grab the components uh, but the added advantage is that, like, realistically, if you were going to rock up and there were components in the ship, you'd grab all the components, you would take them back and sell them, and then come back and then salvage the ship, because anyone else rocking up to that hull is going to have to do it by hand, and by the time you get back, they're most likely no one's going to be yep. there when you get back. The, so take the, the valuables, go and come back and do what is valuable just to you and your ship. Well, I think that comes into what game time you've got to play, like, you know... That's true. You have work, you've got two hours to play. Do I have time to do two runs? Otherwise, you say, what's the most valuable bit? And I'm taking what is the most valuable bit. And But you've still got to do that choice, that choice option. But that is probably the biggest negative that we could think of. Yeah. Um, I, I think, though, we when we look at this ship, uh, and of the other yearly details, I, I think we kind of give this ship the... Uh, featherweight champion award because it really is punching above its weight class in regards to those ships and um it, it is unique in its role and i think it is kind of strongest of those three ships mm. i also well, I did, we also did we also did think that these three ships were really nicely balanced against each other didn't we, we that was yep. one of us that we as we were nutting it out the other day we we actually came to the conclusion wow these ships are really really balanced you know you, you mm. they're not over top they're not they're not below but the small cargo place on these ships 
really gives us that clear indication that we think there's something else coming. Yeah, and w well, and one of the reasons for that is this kind of gimping with the 12 SCU of cargo because most people go, "Why have you done that? Why have you done that?" And I think it very clearly signifies that is because they want to make a gap. They want to make a gap in the market, and that gap is for more ships. And those ships are, it is clearly a sign to me that there is more mid-level range utility ships coming. Yep. So to give an example, let's use the Vulture. If the Vulture is a single seater and it, you have to go out in EVA, but it still does the basic salvage and you can pick up some components. And on the other end, you've got the Reclaimer that can do utterly everything, but it's really large and it can't go down to planet. That's its drawback. Well, it can but it's really expensive. You put a mid-range in the, in, in the middle of that, you can see between the Vulture to the Reclaimer, there's four big things. And I always forget what these four are, but I'm sure you'll remind me. Um, Ship crunching. It, it, can, it can refine. What did you say? Ship crunching. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, can, it can basically cut the ship up. Um, it has drones and it... Uh, Refines. Oh, yeah, I said refine. I'm trying to think of the fourth one. I can't think of it. But there are four and I can't remember the last one. But long story short, this medium ship most likely will have two of those four. So I'm pretty sure it's not going to refine, but I reckon it'll cut up and probably have drones. This medium level one. Um, I'm trying to... Th Man, I know the last one's a big one. And I just can't remember what it was. Uh, but and, anyway. And that and that almost says, if, if these medium ships come along, that would almost say this small ship just disappears. It's no longer needed. But again, earlier we were talking about uh, the use of this ship with the big ship. And we both thought, well, well, you actually made the point, and I actually agree. Uh, mm. But when you put it with the Reclaimer again, Reclaimer, because it can do all the big stuff, pairing this ship with it to be able to pick up the, the, the loose bits, you know, it's crunching up the big ship and there's loose bits of metal flying around when broken up. This can actually take those and deal with that, or it can go down to the planet, or it can do mm. those other things. And so it, it, it comes back into its own when it comes, when it's paired up with this big ship in, in, yeah. the, in the long run. And, and the real worry, I think, and kind of concern that we have is how much is the medium ships when it comes to these three starters so we'll just focus on the medium salvage here mm. how much is this medium salvage ship going to tread on the toes of this starting ship yeah. and that is undetermined but i'm pretty sure as i said it'll be two of those four things that the reclaimer has over this ship so um and and due to that due to that, that clear indication and due to that fact that we're not sure how much that medium ship will imp impact on on the, um, the role of this small, small ship. We've actually come to the conclusion that unless you are someone who knows you absolutely must do salvage and you actually want to do it right from the start, that we would recommend you only buy this ship in game. Yeah. So you earn it in game, unless you know you want to do it from the start on. Yeah, so while it's the best of these ships, we still want to wait and see what those mediums are like. And um, if you kind of think about how would the best way to go about selling ships, it would be to sell the really large ones, then the small ones, then the medium ones. And it makes the most sense, and that's exactly how they're going to sell them. Uh, they might like. I, I'd love to see the question on uh, ATV or Reverse the Verse or something like that, calling all devs, is there medium level salvage ships and mining ships coming? And, and how will they gimp or affect my... Yeah, I, I wouldn't even go that far. I just want to because I know I, I'm pretty sure they're gonna they're gonna tread a little bit on the reclaimer and they're gonna tread a little bit on this. They have to. That's just the nature of the, it being a salvage yep. ship. But it's how it doesn't it make them completely not viable. Like, what is the scaling? What what yep. like can I have can I have ten people in Vulcans and it's equal to ten people in in uh, two medium ships if the or two reclaimers even? You know what I mean? Mm. Can you can you take ten people and they no matter where you put them, they scale the same. Um, that's always a question. And, and, and you obviously want a progressive scale. So to give an example, the Reclaimer is always going to have that refinery over the two other ships below it in the, the thing. So they do naturally want you to progress to bigger and better ships. But at the same time, you want every ship to be viable when you have mm -hmm. it. You don't ever want it to become redundant. And that, I think, is a very big fear. Yeah, and that, that, that's our fear. And that's the only reason while we're recommending, unless you know you want it, buy it in game. All right. Well, I've On been executed, note. and this is I'm our group. Garrett. We won't... Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, we've got a Discord. <laughs> uh, if you want to leave us a question about this ship, shoot us a line, and we'll get you back to you as soon as we can. Uh, like if you this... like, 
If you like our video, please give it a like. If you don't like it, fine. <laughs> Leave comments. <laughs> Leave comments. Yeah. I, um, I read every comment. Uh, I know our group I, tries to as well, and so does Hayes. Uh, but we might not reply to everyone, but we definitely read every single one. All right. Uh, Till next time. I hope you enjoyed this bias guide. And if you, again, have any questions, let us know. All right. Take care. Catch Have you next time. Later.